For many years, this image, known the world over as the surgeon's photograph, was the picture that defined the Loch Ness Monster. To an extent, it still does, but for a very different reason. I'm sure we all know the story by now. Way back in 1934, gynecologist Robert Kenneth Wilson was out looking for Nessie and managed to snap this perfect, iconic image of what looked like a plesiosaurus raising its head and neck out of the water. Later in the mid-90s, a deathbed confession revealed the truth of the photo, which turned out to be little more than a hoax. The quote-unquote creature was nothing more than a model dinosaur head mounted atop a toy submarine. This was a crushing blow to serious research for the Loch Ness Monster, and the cruel irony of it was that the story was broken by a Nessie researcher and eyewitness. Either way, the case is closed. Or is it? To this day, there remain those who find the hoax story suspicious. Perhaps they say the real hoax is the claim of a hoax. You might scoff at the notion, thinking these people are just being stubborn in their refusal to accept the truth. But before you do, consider these anomalies which lead them to this conclusion. The first piece of evidence is admittedly debatable. The long-standing argument in favor of the photo's authenticity is that the alleged hoaxer claims to have made the model from plastic wood, a substance which was not invented until after 1934. The debate comes from how one defines plastic wood, since a similar substance to plastic wood had been invented by 34, but whether it was the exact material used and whether or not it was readily available to the public remains a point of contention in the debate. There is another thing to consider, though, something that tends to get overlooked in the modern era. There is a second surgeon's photograph, and it looks like this. Even though it was never as widely publicized as the image we all know, by the 70s the two pictures were as inseparable as conjoined twins, paired together in articles, books, and documentaries. Gradually, public attention shifted towards the more famous picture, since it presented the most striking image of the two. By the time the hoax story broke, the second picture had fallen into nearly total obscurity, so it was never included in the explanation that involved toy submarines and plastic wood. I also suspect some Nessie skeptics would prefer it remain in obscurity, because it does not fit the narrative. Seeing the pictures side by side, it's clear that they do not depict the same object, whatever each respective object may be. You see, the model allegedly used to fake the iconic picture was inflexible. The head was sculpted at a 90 degree angle from the upright neck, and it remains that way permanently. However, the object in the second image, which also resembles a head at the end of a neck, is at a different angle which the model could not possibly have achieved. This raises questions which keep the case of the surgeon's photograph from being open and shut. If the hoax story is true, and the first image is a model, then this object cannot be the same model. So what is it? Well, no one can seem to agree on that. Since it was never factored into the hoax story, it was never explained, so people have had to speculate. Is it an alternate model which didn't work? Is it a bird, otter, or some other common animal? Is it a log? And whatever it is, why was it included alongside the more striking image provided by the model? This square peg doesn't fit in the round hole. Unless, that is, you entertain the possibility that both images are of the same organic cryptid known locally as Nessie, as some have maintained. Of course, bringing the possibility of the photos being genuine raises its own burning question. If they are authentic, what motivated the deathbed confession of a hoax? At the moment, I don't pretend to have answers to any of those questions. I merely believe that, despite claims to the contrary, the full story of the surgeon's photograph has yet to be told. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it, as well as subscribe to the channel for more content of a similar nature. Also, check the description for links to our Twitter, DeviantArt, and Patreon pages, as well as the Amazon link for the novel Operation Red Dragon The Daikaiju Wars Part 1, penned by yours truly. Thank you all, and we appreciate your support.